please remain standing for the national anthem played by Deja and Dijon Kane of the Desperados Steel Orchestra. And I now invite His Grace, the Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon, to lead us in prayer. Father, we thank you that we can gather here today. We are the only people in the world that has taken a garbage bin and turned it into music, taken what was discarded and turn it into what is highly productive, beautiful, sensational, and amazing. Father, we thank you for the creativity of our people that you have blessed this land with and for all of our artists. We thank you for Despas and for their long journey down the hill to this place. We pray, O oh God, that as we turn sod today that it may give this band, a new beginning, a new identity, a new start. We lament, Lord, the fact of the move, but we rejoice, O oh God, that they find a home. And we ask, Lord, your blessing on every member of the band and every member of the steel band community in Trinidad and Tobago. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please don't take your seats just yet. My apologies. We have uh, one more prayer. Prayer is important. I now take us Archbishop Ernst Muhammad of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Carmel Spiritual Baptist Church Metaphysics, to also give a prayer. Must indeed say good morning to each and everyone. To Honorable Dr. Keith Rowley and his entourage minister, Desperados, Pantetta, all those that sacrificed from the beginning, according to Archbishop Gordon. And we thank Almighty God for bringing us here to Jesus Christ our Lord. When we enter here in your limity, let God, to Jesus Christ, enter into this place. By the entrance of divine happiness, the perfect joy and abundance of charity. Let all the negative forces fly from this place and let the angels of peace protect this project. From length strive, depart, magnify and turn unto us thy holy name to Jesus Christ. Bless our conversation and our assembly. At this time, not in name, but in Jesus' mighty name. God bless each and every one. And now you may take your seats.
Dr. The Honorable Keith Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Senator The Honorable Randall Mitchell, Minister of Tourism, Culture, and the Arts. The Honorable Stuart R. Young, Minister of Energy and Energy Industries. The Honorable Simon de Nobrega, Minister of Communications. The Honorable Keith Scotland, Member of Parliament for Port of Spain South. His Grace, the Most Reverend Charles Jason Gordon, Archbishop of Port of Spain. His Worship, Alderman Joel Martinez, Mayor of the City of Port of Spain. Aldermen, councillors, members of the executive of the Port of Spain Corporation. Miss Esther Innes, Permanent Secretary Acting, Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts. Mr. Noel Garcia, Chairman of the Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago, Udicott. Mr. Mika Charles Phillips, CEO, Udicott and Management and Staff of Udicott. Ms. Beverly Ramsey Moore, President of Pan Trinbago. Ms. Desiree Myers, Chairman of the Northern Region of Pan Trinbago. Dr. Finbar Fletcher, Chairman of the Board of Desperado Steel Orchestra and members of the executive and the band. Mr. Laura Maffei, Managing Director of the West Indian Tobacco Company Limited, Whitco. Mr. Jason Fortini, Head of Government Affairs Caribbean at Whitco. Bishop Ernest Mohammed, Our Lady of Mount Carmel Spiritual Baptist Church Metaphysics, members of the media, members of the national public viewing on TTT and Unicord's Facebook page, and those listening live on I-95 and Sangit 106.1. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome. Indeed, what a beautiful and hopeful day it is as we gather for the official sod turning of, of the New Desperados Pan Theater. An avid Despers fan myself, today promises to be a turning of another wonderful moment in history for the iconic Desperado Steel Orchestra. I'm your host, Marsha Caballero, and today I am extremely honored to have the opportunity to be part of this official sort turning of the creatively envisioned Desperados Pan Theater, which will become home not only to Desperados, but for the many generations of pan and cultural enthusiasts that will surely find themselves at this pan theater listening and swaying to our beautiful national instruments. And I know that you are as excited for the future as I am. And with every government infrastructural initiative, there's also the opportunity for community development. And to share more on the positive impact that the Desperados Pan Theater can bring to the residents of the area, I now invite the Honorable Keith Scotland, Member of Parliament for Port of, Port of Spain South, to give the opening remarks. The Honorable Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Senator, the Honorable Randall Mitchell, Minister of Tourism, Culture, and the Arts. The Honorable Stuart R. Young, Minister of Energy and Energy Industries. The Honorable Fitzgerald Hines, Minister of National Security. The Honorable Simon de Nobrega, Minister of Communications and Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister. His Grace, the Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon, Archbishop of Port of Spain, His Worship, Alderman Joel Martinez, Mayor of the City of Port of Spain, Alderman, Councillors, Members of the Executive of the Port of Spain City Corporation, Ms. Esther Innes, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and the Arts, Mr. Noel Garcia, Chairman of the Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago, Ms. Tamika Charles Phillips, CEO of the Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago, management staff and staff of the Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago, Ms. Beverly Ramsey Moore, President of Pan Trinbago, Ms. Desiree Myers, Pan Trinbago Northern Region, Chairman, Dr. Finbar Fletcher, 
chairman of the board of Desperado Steel Orchestra and members of the executive and band, Mr. Laura Mefre, managing director of West Indian Tobacco Company, Mr. Jason Fournilier, head of government affairs, Caribbean West Indian Tobacco, Bishop Ernest Mohammed, Our Lady of Mount Carmel Spiritual Baptist Church of Metaphysics member, members of the media, members of the public viewing live on TTT, Udicott's Facebook page and listening on I-95.5 and Sangeet 106.1, ladies and gentlemen. After the salutations was finished, I thought I would end my speech and just say thank you. And then it dawned on me that the amount of stakeholders that are involved in this project demonstrates the fundamental significance of this project and this occasion. This sort of turning represents the involvement of the government, state enterprise, the church, the private sector, and most importantly, members of this renowned steel orchestra, as I have seen, Mr. Porter Spain, Thunderbolt Williams, and other members too numerous to mention. This collaborative approach seems to me to be a continuation of a phenomenon of the rekindling of the community spirit that I have seen in Port of Spain South and I've been witnessing over the past year or so. It emerged out of the pandemic and culminated as recently as two weeks ago with the outpouring of synthesis and working together after the recent deluge and floods in Port of Spain South. Therefore, at this event, I can say with some certainty that united we will stand. The context of this sort of turning event is also very significant from a governance standpoint. You all will recall sometime, I think it was Friday the 16th of October 2020, when the first public visit to this site was undertaken. And it was promised that the sword turning would happen on or about the second quarter of 2021. We beg pardon, we beg forgiveness. We are a couple weeks off, but this shows that despite a global and local challenges that potentially threaten our very existence, that this government remains focused on all fronts and is keeping its word to the members and the people of Trinidad and Tobago. On this day, this sort of turning represents a commitment and a belief in the future, in spite of existing circumstances. It represents an entrenchment of an integral part of our culture, the orchestra despers. The benefits of this project are numerous, including the creating of employment opportunities, including the rekindling of East Port of Spain, providing entertainment for both local and foreign persons, and it is a solid investment in our future and in the future artists of tomorrow, whilst honoring and acknowledging the maestros of the past, the Rudolph Charles, the Clive Bradleys, the Pat Bishops, who have removed or who have been removed from us now. I say to you, this is a critical component in the revitalization of Port of Spain. And as I remember those maestros, I now come to the main theme as I wrap up my speech. What good is it that we have this great project, this great Despers new site, the revitalization, the sword turning, and we don't have people who are alive and healthy to participate in it. I say to you, 
vaccinate. Vaccinate so we can all be around in the future to reap and enjoy the benefits of this project that we have started today. There are some 25 steel orchestras in the constituency of Port of Spain South. I look forward to seeing you all and communing with you all in the future. But vaccinate. It's the only way we can do it. I watched the premiership over the weekend. 76,000 people packed Old Trafford, all vaccinated. Why can't we do the same? I look forward to seeing you all. This is a commitment to the future of the country that says we will look beyond this pandemic and we will survive. And as I close my speech while I was writing it, I thought of my days at Sunday school because one of my favorite songs in Sunday school went, I have a joy down in my heart and it's down in my heart to stay because of the commitment to this project and the commitment to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. I thank you. Thank you so much, MP Scotland, for the reminder of the call to vaccinate so that events like this can be larger, bigger, and as a people, we can truly enjoy our culture. A band rich with heritage, emerging from the people and for the people, Despers, as the band is affectionately called, is indeed a significant part of our country's panoramic history. And the new Pan Theater will definitely enshrine this band even further. I now invite Dr. Finbar Fletcher, chairman of the board of Desperado Steel Orchestra, to bring remarks on behalf of the board and the band. Mr. President, good morning to all. Dr. the Honorable Peter Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Senator, the Honorable Randall Mitchell, Minister of Tourism, Culture, and the Arts. The Honorable Stuart Young, Minister of Energy and Energy Industries. The Honorable Fitzgerald Hines, Minister of National Security. The Honorable Simon de Norbrega, Minister of Communications and Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister. The Honorable Keith Scotland, Member of Parliament for Port of Spain South, His Grace, Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon, Archbishop of Port of Spain, His Worship, Alderman Joel Martinez, Mayor of the City of Port of Spain, Aldermen, Councillors, Members of the Executive of the Port of Spain City Council, Ms. Esther Innes, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, Mr. Noel Garcia, Chairman of the Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago Limited, Udicut, Mr. Mika Charles Phillips, CEO of Udicut, Management and Staff of Udicut, Mrs. Beverly Ramsey Moore, President of Pantry and Bago, Ms. Desiree Myers, Pantry and Bago Northern Region Chairman, members of Desperados Executive and the Orchestra. Some of the elders who are here, um, Thunderbolt Williams, Kenneth Charles, Jerry Waldron, and the others. Mr. Lawrence Murphy, Managing Director of West Indian Tobacco. Mr. Jason Funile, Head of Government Affairs of West Indian Tobacco. Bishop Ernest Mohammed, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Spiritual Baptist Church Metaphysics. Members of the media, members of the national view, public, Viewing live on TTT, on Utica God's Facebook page, and listening on I-95.5 FM and Sangeet 106.1 FM. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. So that, that was a speech. Uh, good morning, good morning. Um, I recall about three years ago, um, when I was first told about the possibility of the band moving to this location, I was in a conversation with uh, Mr. Kenneth Collis, who was the then manager of the band. 
And we want to say thanks to him too for, for, for initiating, uh, at least being part of the initiation of this project. But our conversation immediately focused on three things. The first thing is the role that the band could play in the revitalization of the city. In fact, um, you're saying that Desperados being here would make people want to go beyond Charlotte Street. A lot of, for a lot of people, see there for the ends on, on, on Charlotte Street or Henry Street. Um, secondly, we saw the, the, the possibility for the economic opportunities that it offered us. And thirdly, um, we saw it as a nurturing ground for developing not only steel pan artists, but, but also overall good citizens of the city and the community and the country. So from the beginning, it was more than just a pan yard for us. Indeed, if we look at the, the concept and the cultural history of the, of the yard, um, this is of great significance to the cultural sector in Trinidad and Tobago, and it goes back decades and perhaps even centuries. The tradition it contains are invaluable and are passed from generation to generation as a form of cultural preservation. So take, for example, the backyards were prime spots for social and political commentary, telling our stories through Kaiso. In the mass camps, we learned and mastered a myriad of skills. And it is, it is in the panyard that contains the highest form of our musical expression as a people. That is the panyard. These yards have evolved over time into real institutions with their own value systems, their cultural norms, practices, and rituals, among other things. Today, we are taking yet another step in the evolution of the panyard bringing the same cultural traditions that we value so much into a new kind of space, adapting to the needs and demands of the 21st century. I am indeed grateful to stand here on behalf of the orchestra and the great organization that is Desperados as we turn the sod for a new hub of operations, a space that brings with it tremendous opportunities for growth and, us and ushers in the start of a new era for the band, the steel pan fraternity, and the community. Desperados is by no way unfamiliar with taking things to the next level. On the contrary, when discussing innovation or things like ingenuity and breaking new ground in the cultural sphere, one would almost always invoke the name of Desperados, whether it be that of the prolific Rudolf Charles, leader, tuner, and innovator, or the incomparable musical arrangements of the late master musicians Clive Bradley, just to highlight a few. Therefore, we understand and appreciate fully the awesome responsibility that comes with this facility, where the evolution of our cultural expression is concerned with development in tourism, carnival, and other festivals with financial growth, sustainability, and prosperity, and the role you're called to play in further advancing both our social and economic infrastructure. The yard and the community also share a sort of symbiotic relationship, and it is against that backdrop we acknowledge that this project is one of the first initiatives in the government's latest trust into the regeneration and revitalization of the city of Port of Spain, particularly East Port of Spain. And we hope that this project would be a beacon for the others to come. In closing, on behalf of the management and membership of the Desperado Steel Orchestra and the community of Lavantil, I express our gratitude to the government and Repub of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago for this venture and all that it represents, and also the promise that it holds for the future of steel pan culture and the community of East Port of Spain. It is an investment in people, it is an investment in the community, and you cannot go wrong with that. I thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fletcher. Indeed, this project will be a beacon 
of uh, many projects under the Port of Spain revitalization, many to come. Trinidad and Tobago's tourism and cultural sector reflects the innovation, creativity, and cultural richness that is uniquely ours as a people of this blessed nation. And to tell us more of the impact of the cultural infrastructure, such as the Desperados Pan Theater, on the tourism landscape, I now invite Senator the Honorable Randall Mitchell, Minister of Tourism, Culture, and the Arts, to give remarks. Thank you very much, Madam Master of Ceremonies. I begin by acknowledging Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. The Honorable Keith Rowley, my cabinet colleagues here today, my parliamentary colleague, MP for Port of Spain South, MP Scotland, His Grace Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon, Archbishop of Port of Spain, his Worship, the Mayor of the City of Port of Spain and the Councillors of the City of Port of Spain, Permanent Secretaries, Chairman of UDICOT and members of UDICOT, President of Pan Trinbago, Mrs. Beverly Ramsey Moore, members of the Desperados Steel Orchestra, members of the corporate community, namely WITCO, Bishop Mohammed, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. Now being a proud member of the southern city, oftentimes in events such as these, I would take the opportunity, just like all the other speakers, to boast about whose preferred steel band is the best. So I would say Fonclair, Minister Young would say Renegades. Minister Nidobrega will say phase two. And Prime Minister, depending on whose company we keep, we will leave invaders and all-stars totally out of the conversation. <laughs> but today is not that type of day, and it's not for that type of discussion. Because there's no argument to the contrary that the Desperado Steel Orchestra is the number one band at this time in Trinidad and Tobago. It is the most successful band. They have the most titles. That is an immutable fact, and that is that. We're not going to talk about that anymore. With respect to, with respect to the band's migratory patterns in the last few years, with respect to the band's migratory patterns in the last few years, we will leave that to MP Hines and MP Scotland to debate and decide whose constituency Desperados really belongs to. But today, I take the opportunity to speak more on the tourism aspect of my portfolio and how the marriage of the revitalization of Port of Spain and the creation of new and enhanced entertainment hubs and attractions enhance our overall tourism product here in the capital city. You hear us speak a lot about revitalization these days. But under the astute leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister, the re revitalization of our capital city began all the way back in 2016 with the refurbishment and the restoration of our heritage buildings. Stolmeyer's Castle, President's House, Mille Fleur, and the Red House. And earlier this year, along with UDICOT, the ministry also entered into consultation expressing our desire to enhance the Arapita Avenue experience. And that is us going down into our cultural heritage. And today, we dive very deeply into our cultural heritage to develop this $14 million pan theater facility. With this facility, we expect every tourist, especially our cruise tourists, and bear in mind, every time a ship comes to the docks of Port of Spain, at least 3,000 tourists come on board. 
And that's 3,000 opportunities for DESPAs to welcome each and every one of them earning some foreign exchange into this pan theater facility. It gives the tourists and our visitors, our locals, a chance to immerse themselves deep into the history of Steel Pan, witness its creation, and lose themselves in the melody. At the ministry, it is our goal to expand our options and attractions for our visitors, especially our cruise visitors. We are more than just Maracas Beach and the Botanical Gardens. We wish to give our visitors an opportunity to experience our very rich culture and heritage. Whether it be a production at Queen's Hall or at the Napa, or whether it be entertainment and a whole steel pan experience right here on the Desperados Pan Theater. While this facility is indeed a world-class pan theater, there will also be very comfortable seating for spectators. There will be gift shops. There will be other retail opportunities. There will be an entertainment space. And there will be safe and ample parking for all. The new facility will provide the DESPA's organization, its board and its management, with limitless earning potential and possibilities. through, of course, sustainable business models. It is my hope, Despers, that you all understand and seize these opportunities. These are very exciting times ahead, and there is no better time for this sod turning than in August, Steel Pan Month. And with that, I take the opportunity to commend the president of Pan Trinbago, Ms. Beverly Ramsey Moore, for working with government in ensuring that members of the Steel Pan fraternity were able to access the $5,000 cultural relief grant, for ensuring that members of the Steel Pan fraternity were able to access a lot of the government's social programs via hampers, etc. And especially, I want to commend the president of Pantrin Bego for working with government and for Pantrin Bego for working with government, in particular the Ministry of Health, in ensuring that all members of the Pan fraternity get vaccinated. It is incredibly important. And we thank you, Ms. Ramsey Moore, for working with us in ensuring that members are vaccinated. So before I go, I wish to also thank the sponsor, WITCO. Without you, Desperados perhaps could not be all that it could be. And we encourage corporate sponsorship. Government presently provides certain tax incentives for corporate entities wishing to invest in culture. And we are working to see how that can be enhanced to enhance the culture of Trinidad and Tobago. So I thank you, of course, for the opportunity to give these few remarks. And it is my hope that the pandemic has allowed us and given us ample time to reflect and to reestablish our confidence that our culture is the richest in this region. It is the richest in this, re in, in this region. And it is now time to reap what our ancestors have sowed. I thank you, everyone, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Minister Mitchell. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to lose yourselves in the melodies of the Desperados Steel Orchestra.
Thank you so very much. I, I, the, the sweet songs are Despers, the sweet sound of Pan. I know like me, you transported yourself to the completed Pan Theater and envisioned yourself chipping and swaying to the beautiful sound of our cultural music. And now, without further ado, please stand as I invite Dr. The Honorable Keith Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, to give the feature address. A very good morning to you, fellow citizens. Permit me the opportunity to acknowledge my cabinet colleague, Senator the Honorable Randall Mitchell, Minister of Tourism, Culture, and the Arts. My other cabinet and parliamentary colleagues, including the Member of Parliament for Port of Spain North St. Anne's West, Port of Spain South, and Diego Martin Central, Your Worship the Mayor, Alderman Joel Martinez, along with his ecclesiastical colleague, Bishop Ernest Mohammed of the Mount Carmel Spiritual Baptist Church. I would also like to acknowledge, by way of a special welcome, to Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon, Archbishop of the city of Port of Spain, and also a very special acknowledgement to Mrs. Ms. Beverly Ramsey Moore, the president of Pantrin Bego. Mr. Noel Garcia of Udicott and his management team, Dr. Fimbal Fletcher, chairman of the board of Desperado Steel Orchestra, Mr. Laurel Murphy, managing director of West Indian Tobacco, members of the media, members of the national public, ladies and gentlemen all. Welcome to this seminal occasion which we all hope one day we look back at this morning as a time long past as we come to this spot to relax, to marvel, and to be entertained. As a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, Ladies and gentlemen, I have been in the political arena for decades. And I could tell you that I think I know this country. And we have not done well on very many occasions. This morning, I'd like to speak to you for a few moments on the subject of diversification and the Trinidadian and Tobagonian. If you throw a bear bottle in the sky and pour a spear, it's likely it could fall in the head of somebody who could tell you what to do with your life, tell you what to do with the country, but they can't tell you what they've done with theirs and what they've done for the country. Everybody will tell you that what this country needs to do is to diversify the economy. We've been hearing that for decades, meaning do different things for the economy, as the economy. Do not sit back as we've done, fortunately we've had it to do, and wait for the earnings from oil and gas. Wherever you are in the country, those earnings will reach you through a government program. So you don't really have much to do. Wait for the government to get to you, and the oil and gas earnings will take care of you, your children, and your grandchildren. That might have worked well for us, ladies and gentlemen. But I want us to begin to understand the reality of the days ahead and why this thing about diversification is more than talk. Recently, General Motors announced 
that it will stop making internal combustion engines for motor vehicles in 15 years' time. That sounds like a long time to come. They will go on for a long time. But I ask you, cast your mind back to where you were 15 years ago. And when you get there, think of today as the day when they start making the engines, and that's the time frame you're working with. You could imagine what kind of world we'll be living in. It's almost going to take us back to when the horse and buggy was replaced by the internal combustion engine. It's as dramatic as that. So what we have to do now is stop talking about diversification and start diversifying our economy. Because a day will come when the market for what we've lived on will not be there, or if it is there, it will not be as substantial and as sustainable as it used to be. And if you think I'm joking, go back and ask your grandparents who used to live on sugarcane, citrus, bananas, when this country lived off agricultural produce. Look how long ago those changes have grown. We've been living off oil and gas, and we've forgotten that there was a time when we used to export grapefruits to Europe and export banana and export oranges. We are in that mode now. But I'm not telling you anything new. You would have been here and hearing about the diversification requirements, and you would have forgotten the attempts that we have made. Because we did try. We did try. But a significant component of failure has attended our attempts, largely because of our behavior and our downright foolishness. Because at the same time you're talking about diversifying, let me just take you down memory lane. We did get involved at Point Lisas with monetizing our gas that was underground on land or in, under the sea for hundreds of millions of years. We brought it to Point Lisas. And we got involved in world business of making products that were sold in the international market. That, by and large, has been a successful experiment, notwithstanding that there were people in this country who had opposed that attempt. Because, of course, there's always somebody with a better idea than yours. But if you try that idea, you'll last very long. But Point Lisas has been a successful model in Trinidad and Tobago. And that was largely because there was a government in the country that was prepared to take the hard knocks of doing it, standing by it, believing in it, but most importantly, doing it. There was a time soon after Point Lisas came into operation when the world market collapsed and the knees of this country started to knock and the naysayers were in the forefront. One political party actually listed in its manifesto how wrong it was to have invested in those Point Lisas industries and committed itself never to invest in another one, another plant. Thankfully, the country did not go down that road. Otherwise, the last decade and the decade before, I don't know where we would have been. But Point Lisas is today regarded as the Trinidad and Tobago model. And the LNG plant in Point Fortin is regarded as the Trinidad model. One of the first in the world of a small LNG plant ex ex exporting LNG to the developed world. So we did try and we did succeed. But what about Labidco? If Point Lisas was successful, then we said we are going to use the natural deep water harbor in Labre and build Labidco and have a, a brother or a sister to Point Lisa. So we, instead of having one industrial estate, we'll have two. And all that goes on in Point Lisa, we multiply it by two. Yesterday, I passed outside Labidco on my way to and from Chatham. And it hurt my heart to see what I saw there. And to remember that when Labidco was being built, I remember the figure, I was in the cabinet at the time. We spent $44 million to get the harbor and the estate built. But of course, everything you do here, there's somebody with counterpoint. 
to undo it. So when the government changed in 1995, that was 1995, yes, and the experiment was abandoned. And for five years, the Labigo, the Labigo plant, uh, estate remained abandoned. In a country that keeps telling itself, we need to diversify and we need to grow and expand our economy. But we were able to abandon that industrial estate. Then, of course, we came back to it again later on when things change. And we said, we are going to diversify away from oil and gas into another aspect of the international economy. We're going to get involved in aluminum. So when the oil and gas market goes down, aluminum might be up. And because we have an additional or different product, we are different and diversified in the international marketplace. We spent hundreds of millions of dollars on going down that road. And then the government changed. And of course, the conversation was that we abandoned that. Go look at it down there now. You'd see huge cranes, you'd see the estate prepared, and you see a power plant that was built for industrialization is now lighting your homes. That wasn't, that wasn't what that plant was for. That plant was to supply power to this aluminum smelter. I can tell you now without contradiction, all the nations that are producing aluminum products are still producing them. And nobody is being poisoned, nobody is being hurt, the economy is diversified. But in Trinidad and Tobago, we abandoned hundreds of millions of dollars down there at the behest of those who thought they knew better. But even so, that was down in the south. You could say, okay, that was down in the south and they don't like down there. But what about the industrial park, the ETEC, Tamana Industrial Park, that was meant to bring us into modern technology and use technology to create industries in there? in a country that had relatively cheap energy and a highly trained population. Government change, we abandoned that too. Abandon, leave it to the bush. By the time you come back to it, another set of hundreds of millions have gone down the drain, opportunities have lost, but the conversation continues. Diversify the economy, diversify the economy, diversify the economy. And then the peers, the resistance, is the Sandals Project in Tobago. We said Tobago be the jewel of the Southern Caribbean and new destination, prime destination for a Sandals Project because Sandals population around the region, they go from place to place. It's a captured population. They go to different Sandals around, even in the same country. And of course, they don't need us to pay airlines to fly their plane to us. They have that as their strength, the airlift that goes. Bahamas has a lot. Jamaica, Antigua, St. Lucia, Grenada today. And then it should have been Trinidad, Tobago. Tobago said no. Trinidadians encouraged Tobagoans to say no. Tobago said no. Right now, there are two additional ones being built in Jamaica. I think two more in Barbados. One in St. Uh, Lucia. Grenada is booming with one, and Tobago is asking what has happened on their way to Curacao. We were ahead of all of those. But somebody in this country told you that this government was going to sell your boat right down the drain in sandals. And of course, our project went up in old talk. And then, you know, after that, carry on the old talk and cause the abandonment of that. They have the unmitigated goal, some of them, to say the prime minister didn't sell it properly. If the prime minister had sold it properly, it couldn't have been lost. Even before we got to the point of determining the terms and conditions, and I ask you people, what terms and conditions could we possibly have got involved in that would have been different to the Bahamas, Antigua, Curacao, Barbados, Grenada, and St. Vincent? What? Just old talk and people who believe that we must fail so that they can succeed. 
But today, we are still talking about diversification and we are here to diversify. I'm head of a cabinet that has committed to securing the future of the city of Porto, Spain, as the capital city of Trinidad and Tobago. And we see a city as an economic engine for the nation. And it's against that background that the cabinet has taken the decision to build this facility that we are initiating here today and build it using the strength of our culture to give it not just hope, but the vision of a substantial future. I haven't heard any argument yet that we don't have the possibility of using our culture to contribute to the diversification of our economy. I haven't heard that yet, but it might be coming. This is Trinidad and Tobago. And what are those trends? Whenever you look at those trends, it come right, comes right back to our people, our people. This facility is an investment in our people. And Despers, I heard talk about steel band from South and Fund. Let me just tell this minister, I have, I have more old Fund jerseys than you have age. And in talking about we might, we might mention invaders. Let me just remind you that invaders is the mother of steel bands in this country. And if I don't claim to speak for invaders from my membership in that organization of 50 years, I can claim my mother's membership from the Laventil Hills. When I left to Big when I came to Trinidad, I came straight to the Laventil Hills. Up the hill was Despers and down below was Tokyo. I hope Tokyo will find its way back into the fraternity of named and famous steel bands in this country. And Casablanca will find its way back. Because at the end of the day, it's all about leadership. It is leadership, whether it's a football club, a cricket club, even a small church. It's all about leadership. And what Despers has demonstrated is a commitment to being the leader in this steel band fraternity. And today, this facility being built by taxpayers' resources, Despers would be regarded as trustee and custodian. And it belongs to every steel band in Trinidad and Tobago. Because what I expect to go on here is continuous practice towards perfection, because music, like golf, always aspires to perfection. <laughs> and continuous practice would see Despers, the resident steel band, inviting other steel bands to put on concerts here. And there will be nights and days when a concert here will not just be Despers players but a group of steel bands in a season of performances. That's one possibility. <laughs> Cricketers play cricket all over the world, and they come with genius from all over the world, from India to New Zealand to Australia to the Caribbean. But when they play at Lords, it's a different game. And they tell you about the day they walked out to play at Lords. Footballers play all over the world, and they're great all over the world. But when they play at Wembley Stadium, it's another story. And of course, musicians play all over the world. But if you happen to play at the Royal Albert Hall, that's a different evening. And so it will be on this occasion for all steel bands, for all pan players, soloists, and orchestras, this will be the real mecca of the steel band in the world, this site, this investment. Because what we are making here today is an investment in securing the steel band. This talk about 
all go out in the world and let them know what steel, what, that we are the inventors of steel band and let them know and fight for it. No. Right here, you will claim it. Because the world will know if you want the real steel band, if you want to hear the real talent in the real land of the steel band, you have to come to this pan theater right here in Port of Spain. And when you establish that, Minister spoke about the thousands of tourists who disgorge onto our ports here every so often. And then the first thing, what do you do when you go to Port of Spain? Somebody asks Granny, what did you do when you were in Trinidad? She must be able to say, I went to the Pan Theater and I experienced a performance. And despite I want to warn you all, performances are not to go beyond two hours. <laughs> half an hour, one hour, an hour and a half, and only when you know, things real. <laughs> because one of the things we have not yet finalized is the size of the concert. And I could see a concert here three times a day. Because if the cruise ship comes in and you have a concert in the morning, you have one at lunchtime and one in the evening. And I'll tell you something, Despers, because I know our people. You could be the best artist drawing nice in this country. Your people will ignore you for years. The day somebody in Carnegie Hall say that you're good, the whole of and Tobago accept you. You're good because you were mentioned abroad. That's how it's gonna be. So when these foreigners come here and begin to use this as the place where they experience the steel band, local people will take it over because foreigners like it. So you have a, you have a population waiting waiting to be utilized, and then there comes earnings. Everybody on a cruise ship that goes into a port somewhere pays for a trip, pays for a, a, a place to go, whether it's to see nature and so on, and they pay on board in US dollars. You can market entry into this venue through the agents, so people can buy their tickets on board ship. So when they come off, this is one place they know after they drive around the savannah and they take in the scenes around there. This is one place they know on board ship is a must hear, must see, must experience. And with music will come food. And of course, even theater. Because if this venue becomes the core, the axle of the sale and the use of culture, then I expect that the private sector, not the government, the private sector, will see it fit to build appendages in this neighborhood, a theater for local production, and everything else. The very art I mentioned, galleries, you can have here because this is where people will come. And what we will have here is an entertainment district. What we are doing today is laying the first block in that edifice. And it is part of our vision 2020. It is part of our post-COVID recovery because the government a little further east, we are engaged in the work through Udicott and its agencies and the Housing Development Corporation and hopefully the private sector in the rebuilding of East Port of Spain. It is my vision, it is my dream that in a decade, you will not be able to recognize the East Port of Spain that was so derided, because you may very well have to ask permission East Port of Spain to come in, please. <laughs> because this is where we can grow. This is where we can do things that we are not doing now, that have a future. And that is an aspect of diversification. And I trust it doesn't go the way of Labidco, it doesn't go the way of Sandals, and it doesn't go the other way. But that it goes the way of success. Because Despers, you've been on a journey. The government invested money up the hill to build whatever is up there. I can tell you now it is the intention of the government to recover that structure into the hands of the Ministry of Community Development so it can be properly utilized up the hill for community development purposes. 
even, even for when Despas returns to the hill to pay homage to the ancestors up there and to the young people up there, to perform up there. So as you are here, being responsible for this site and this investment, your roots are in the hills, and we know that you will not disconnect yourself and sever your navel string from up there. And Despers, if you are successful here, there's nothing that breeds success like success. Every other city and town in this country would want to follow this model because the steel ban is all over Trinidad and Tobago. So San Fernando will have its offering. Arima will have its offering. Chagones will have its offering. Scarborough will have its offering. Labre Point 14 will have its offering. And that is when the steel ban will come of age in contributing significantly to the development, the economic development, the social development of Trinidad and Tobago. The two things that the steel ban is known for, one is talent, the other is discipline at Panorama. I want to caution the leadership of Despers today that after taxpayers spend this money on this site and given the resolute support that you've had from your sponsor over all these decades, make that your birthright and don't look to the Minister of Finance for anything else. The Minister of Finance have other people to look at. You have the opportunity here to make this site an economic powerhouse. Don't go the road of some successful consumer cooperatives that I know of and shall remain nameless, which had the same potential before shopping for groceries was done in supermarkets in this country. It was done at some significant consumer cooperatives. But then that success attracted a certain kind of person who want office and such person who were less than honest. And before you know it, money, the mother of all evil, destroyed the whole movement. That is the danger you have to be careful with. When you begin to earn money on this site, there'll be the potential for the management to fight over money. And the next thing you know, the band mashup. A lie? <laughs> but what you need is strong, honest management, not necessarily the person who is playing the pan, but the person who knows about business and who can secure the business model for the pan. I tell you this so that when you have elections in the ban, it is not no election only about election for the ban and who picked the tune. This facility is going to cost $14 million. It is not everybody who could play a tune could manage $4 million. You might need a different skill, a different kind of person. There are other people up the hill, down the hill, and in the nation. Some of them from far and wide, even Tobago. Get the right peg in the right hole, and despise your future would be secure. I want to end on this note. Many years ago, well, you know, invaders don't win Panorama because we can't pass seventh. The first six spaces reserved for despise and yeah, reserved, even, even when they have a fumbling start. But the bottom line is, you know, a few years ago, a few years ago, Desiree is somewhere in here, right? Where, where is Desiree? Desiree, right. A few years ago, Invaders were struggling to make numbers to go to Panorama. And a few of us, non-players like me, and old players, told the band membership, that junior band that is in the school, which one? Bring them into the pan yard and let them be absorbed in the adult band and get them involved in the, into the national panorama. 
some people were a little concerned that to bring all these young people, particularly young girls, into the panyard was not a good idea. But we said, if we make the panyard safe and secure for young people to be, especially young girls, because a lot of the pan fraternity are women. You look at Panorama, you, you see them. If we make the panyard secure and safe for them where their parents can be convinced that when they are there, they are in a safe environment, we can do wonders. And many of the people who are in the leadership of the part of the band today entered the band at that era. And the band has never had difficulty since then making up its numbers at Panorama or holding its fort among the premier steel bands in the world. I tell you this, Despers, to caution you that this location must be a place of safety and security, especially for young women. If you meet that yardstick, you would secure the future of this facility. If on the other hand, if on the other hand, after we spend all this money, and I sweat as I'm sweating now in all this old talk, <laughs> when it is built and it is concrete and galvanized and whatever else, that the report from this site is who do what to who, and who got shot here, and who killed who here, this investment would have been wasted and it would fail. I caution you, I plead with you to make it a place where you remember the investment of the taxpayer because this 14 million is not government money. It is a contribution of the widow and the businessman and the non-PAN player, and even those who think that the PAN ought not to be encouraged as a national instrument, it is their money. You are the custodian. Success here would be success everywhere. I have a cabinet colleague who says that Laventil is not a place. Laventil is an experience, is a frame of mind. If that be true, Despers, you reach for the stars, and our nights on this side will be bright and prosperous. I thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Prime Minister, for not only sharing your vision but our government's vision for this pan theater, for our culture, for our city, and for our nation. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the end of today's event. Um, but before we proceed to the official sod turning of the Desperados pan theater, we cannot without thanking all of you and all of those listening and viewing on the various media streams for taking part in today's proceedings. I hope, like me, you are very excited for the new development to come, where this indeed is intended to be, as our Honorable Prime Minister says, the mecca of steel ban in the world. So thank you again for joining us for being part of another government initiative of development and impact. And as you go about your day, I ask God to bless you and to please remember to wear your mask wash your hands, watch your distance, and to vaccinate. Someone will come to escort the following persons as the protocol, COVID protocols dictate for the official sort turning, and I'll call their names and someone will come to escort them. Prime Minister Keith Rowley, Minister Mitchell, MP Scotland, Chairman Noel Garcia, and Dr. Fletcher. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end. And uh, thank you, and may God bless you. Please remain safe. Thank you.